all like games, right? But if it's a game where you risk your life in, what would you do? Ah, don't worry, you'll get a badass ability though. Maybe. LOL. <laughs> The anime today will be about Kaname, who is a normal high school student. One day, he gets a Link invitation for a game called Darwin's Game from his friend Hamada, who he hasn't heard from in days, and despite Kyoda telling him not to open the game, he does it anyway. And man, he wished that he didn't. A snake came out of the phone screen and bit him on the neck. He fell and passed out. Kaname wakes up in the school clinic. He meets with Kyoda, who seems to know what's going on, and he tells Kaname to come by his house later to tell him about Darwin's game. While Kaname is on the train, he opens up the game, and it says that he has a battle with someone wearing a panda mascot calling himself Pandakun. And once he took his eyes off the phone, he found the exact panda in front of him. Not only that, but he's holding a freaking knife! I mean, it's like the Scream movies. A crazy guy wearing a mask and killing people using a knife? Bandakun attacks Kaname, but he was able to get away, and he ran and asked for help from a security guard. But Bandakun chopped the guard's neck! Like that! Poor guy. He probably didn't even like the job. And when Kaname was about to be killed, Kyoda comes to his rescue by shooting Bandakun with an arrow, and then Bandakun disappeared and was able to stab Kyoda. The two managed to get away, but it seems like the panda knew where they were. Apparently, there was some sort of tracking system between the fighters. Kaname gets a text from a girl named Shuka. She tells him about the tracking system, so he decides to lure the panda away from Kyoda. Kaname fought with Bandakun and miraculously managed to win, because the idiot panda got hit by a car while he's disappeared. And I'll be damned if his body began to vanish in the square-like pattern. I mean, it was like Minecraft. Kaname went to Kyoda, but sadly, all he found was the shape of squares similar to those of the panda after he died. Kaname got back to his house confused about this game. I mean, for God's sake, he pressed a button and then he had a gun delivered to his house. He meets with Shuka, who asks him to tell her about his sigil so she can trust him. But Kaname doesn't even know what sigils are. So Shuka attacks him, and man, she can move them chains like snakes. It was no way Kaname could win. And just when he was about to die, he managed somehow to form a gun out of thin air. Kaname realized his ability to form objects, so he tricked Shuka and defeated her using a stun gun. Eventually, Shuka withdrew and Kaname survived. After passing out, Kaname woke with Shuka sleeping next to him, naked and tells him to form a family with her. Oh, Kaname, you lucky bastard. But don't get your hopes up too high. Shuka, by a family, meant forming a clan. Although she's able to form a clan, she asks Kaname to be in charge as he is the man, but he has to rank up higher to be able to form a clan. She told him about Darwin's game and how it's based on points you receive. Oh, and you can transfer these points into actual money. A lot, in fact. The two got an event invitation from D-Game on their phones, so they went to Shibuya to check the event arena. That's where Kaname met with Inukai, who challenges him, and Kaname was able to defeat him by holding his phone hostage. Apparently, if you lost your phone, you're as good as dead. Then, the players get teleported to the events arena, and each player had to collect at least three rings, or he'll be disqualified. On the 27th floor of the hotel where he's teleported, Kaname is attacked by a guy wearing a skull face and using a machine gun. He surrenders and delivers his rings. Wimp. Man, I thought you'd be tougher than that. The building is surrounded by plants and all exits are blocked. Apparently, it's the ability of a player called the Florist. Kaname meets Rhine, a middle school student known as the Analyst, for her ability to produce and sell information. She tells him that Wang, the leader of an infamous clan named Eighth, is also participating in the event. I've seen a lot of people that make me nervous, but man, this Wang is on a whole nother level. So Kaname and Rhine team up against the florist, but he has this nagging ability to control other people using his plants. The two have had a bad time trying to get to the florist. Kaname is able to pass the blocked door by jumping from the building while Ryan distracts the brainwashed soldiers. And I love to see a main character who's smart. Why do they always make them stupid? 
Kaname meets the florist, who covered herself with some sort of invincible armor. Not even Kanami's machine gun can do anything. And just when Kanami was about to lose, he sees a vision of a blacksmith looking exactly like him. Kaname reawakens, creating a machine gun strong enough to penetrate his armor and defeats the florist. After knowing Wang's intention to attack the building, Kaname teams up with the florist and the masked skull guy, Ryuji, who as it seems has some sort of grudge against Wang. Rain, with her amazing processing ability, comes to the conclusion that this event is more than just gathering gems. Meanwhile, Shuka sends a distress message to Kaname after fighting with Sui, whose power allows her to control water and turn it into ice. Actually, her brother Sota controls the ice. She has some sort of split personality or something. Anyway, Kaname and Ryuji goes to the rescue. They meet Sui and Kaname, heads to the subway to save Shuka and leave Ryuji to handle the little girl. Kaname is able to rescue Shuka by performing a CPR, and Shuka kisses him afterwards. And so he gets two kisses, which is more than I've had in a while. Sui agrees to join Kaname's clan, and Rain discovered that the rings have a QR code readable by phones, so she gets the codes from all types of rings except for the diamond. But luckily for her, it appeared in the second stage of the event at the hotel, so she had plenty of time to get the code. The eighth clan attacked, while the florist took all the rings as bait, and man, he kicked the shit out of them. Just when he was about to be defeated, he blew up the entire building. Ryan reaches Shibuya Station, knowing that the true treasure is there. But guess who else figured it out? The dump-looking Wang. Apparently, he's smarter than he looks. Which is an idiot, by the way. Ryan with her sigil can literally predict the near future. But she's captured. She didn't know that one of Wang's men had a sigil of a dog. I mean, imagine you entered a game like D-Game to find your ability is sniffing. I mean, you might as well just off yourself. And using his sigil, Wang teleports in front of her and was about to cut her fingers, which is a hobby that Wang enjoys. Hey, if the guy likes cutting fingers and putting them in jars, who are you to judge? But Kanami and the others manage to rescue her and lead her to safety so she can figure out the location of the treasure. Ryuji battles Wang, as it seems Wang killed his little brother. It's revenge for him, but Wang is more than he can handle, and he gets his whole hand cut off, and Kaname interferes at the proper moment. Kaname asks Wang to spare his life in exchange for the key that opens the lock of the treasure that he couldn't care less about the rest of his teammates. Hey, Kaname, you jerk. I mean, I know you want to live, but not like that. But apparently Ryuji's sigil allows him to know the truth from the lie, and he figured out that Kaname was lying by saying those cowardly things. Okay, okay, fine. I misjudged him. Kaname distracts Wang with the key of his bike and opens the true locker by the code he got from Rhine. Wang is furious and saying that he will slice Kaname for fooling him. Okay, let's let's stop here. I don't know about you, Kaname, but I won't take Wang's words for granted. I mean, look at the guy. He is obviously crazy to do any kind of shit. The prize is a phone call from the Game Master saying that he will give you any wish. Except, you know, bringing someone back to life. Or being immortal, so pick something else. Kaname says that he wants to quit, but this is also off the table. So... He thinks through and finally chooses the privilege that is best for him. And it's... That's it. Man, so I have to wait for the next episodes to know what it is. Kanami spends the next two months practicing at the Danjo Boxing Club. And Danjo wants him to prove he's worthy of forming an alliance with. Meanwhile, Kanami's friend Shinozuka pays him a visit to his apartment. <laughs> Man, talk about bad luck. He is kidnapped by Kaichi. I mean, you remember him, that strong guy who fought the florist. Apparently, he survived the crash. Kaname and Donjo had a match, and surprisingly, Kaname forced him to use his sigil. So Donjo confirms that the alliance with Kaname's clan, Sunset Ravens, will be of use. Suddenly, the duel's interrupted by some girl wearing a mask. 
And damn, she was able to stab the two with her sword easily. But thank God, that was only her killing intent. If this is just from her intention, what would it be if she actually tried to kill them? This girl is Liu Zulian, and she is the number one rank in D-Game. Wow, and who says girls are weak? She kidnapped Kaname and her limo. She asks him to join her clan, but he refuses. The Sunset Ravens. Damn, they chose a cool name. They chase after the limo and start a clan battle. If Zulian can get away without killing anyone, she wins and Kaname will be hers. But it's a hard mission, even for number one. I mean, you got Shuka with her chains, the little kid, I mean, girl with her power to control water, Ryan and her amazing brain, and Ryoji, who, who, yeah, yeah, he, he drives the car. Anyway, they managed to stop the limo, forcing Zulian to surrender. And quite a surprise, Zulian joins the Sunset Ravens. Meanwhile, Wang sends Kaname a video of Shinozuka held hostage with his fingers cut off. So if he doesn't want to see anything else get cut off, he should come to save him. Man, talking about parts cut off out of something horrifying. Having located the Eighth's hideout in a warehouse, Ryan meets up with Kotori of the Icy Crown Clan to ask for information about the current status of the Eighth. With the information, the Sunset Ravens and Inukai from the Donjo Clan arrive at the warehouse. They use the police as a distraction while Shuka gives Shinozuka a phone and Kaname tells him to enter D-Game. Shinozuka gets a badass sigil and he can move objects with his mind. So it seems like Wang is about to get into serious trouble. Psych! Wang slices him up and puts him in a box. Imagine the look on Kaname's face. It was like an orgasm to Wang. And then, when Kaname was about to be shot, he shoots Wang's man straight in the forehead. And man, Kaname's eyes were cold as hell when doing it. Shuka pulls Wang with her chains to fight him, and Kaname kills the rest of Wang's men. And it was like playing with toys. As for Shuka, she was about to get killed by Wang after he destroyed her chains, and he was about to slice her when he got his legs cut off. He was screaming in pain like a little girl. It was like music to my ears. He teleported to her back, and when he was about to slice her, his hand got cut off. Wang was probably thinking to himself, what the fuck is going on? Apparently, Shuka placed colored wires all over the warehouse, and with her ability, she can make them like chainsaws. Shuka surrounded Wang with the wires, and he was about to chop him, but he was sneaky and had a secret move. He can replace places with another person. So now, Shuka is the one surrounded by wires. But unfortunately for Wang, Shuka controls the other end of the wire, so his move was useless. Wang escapes the warehouse and falls right in front of Kaname. He surrenders the battle unaware that Kaname is used his high roller privilege from the Game Master that forces the challenged clan to wager the same amount as the Sunset Ravens. So, they got all of his clan's points. And once your points reach zero, you're dead. While Wang is disappearing in squares, Kaname shoots him! And not only once, he makes Wang's face look like a spider. Bunch. I mean, you may think Kaname is ruthless, but come on. Look at Wang's face. Just looking at him makes me furious. After the war with Wang, the Sunset Ravens claimed a territory of their own and prohibited D-Game in it. And by the end of the episode, Kaname was teleported into a forest for an event. And that's it. We have to wait for another season.